Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us here as I broadcast live across the nation on the Valder Beebe Show. And I heard that you brought a friend also, too. Yes, this is Aster, the service dog, short for Asteroid, and she's here as a spokes dog today. All right, then. Well, I've done the Affleck duck. Now I've got Aster. I feel pretty famous. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me, uh, tell me what is it like to need and want a service dog? Absolutely. So my daughter, Savannah, has a service dog. She's 26. She's had one about eight years. She has epilepsy, seizures, so she seizes a few times a week. And it's been an amazing journey for us. Um, in addition to being her best friend and her confidant, uh, he lets us know about the medical condition that she has. He alerts to her seizures, comes and gets us. And it's, it just allows us to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief in our own home. You're always on guard, always vigilant for the seizure. He comes and gets us, and then he snuggles with her while she's seizing and after it's over, and it somehow makes it all a bit more tolerable. Well, I'm glad that, that you feel that good about it. Can I ask you, as the researcher, Jessica, tell me, uh, did you guys do a study about the impact of service dogs on family members? We did. This is the first of its kind study. It was funded by Alanco Animal Health, and it allowed us to investigate the impact of a service dog on family members by comparing a group of family members who were living with a service dog to those on the wait list. How do people qualify for a service dog? So it's really a need-based thing, and it depends on the type of agency. So there's nonprofit agencies like Canine Assistance, where we got our dog, and there's for-profit. And it's based on the need. You know, if somebody needs a dog right away for mobility issues or for seizures, then, you know, they would get a dog sooner. Um, and there's a waiting list, I think, for all of the agencies. Um, it is a big responsibility, but it's also re very rewarding as well. For the people that don't have a service dog, for those of us who are in the mall and the grocery stores and things like that, tell us what a benefit is so people can understand and be more empathetic. You know, I think it's, it's just a, a way in a lot of ways to, um, in addition to the medical aspects, to bring the person who has a condition out of their shell. You know, I mean, you see a dog and you smile and you love them and, and they're there and, and it just sort of... My daughter wears a helmet, she's in a wheelchair, it's a little intimidating. So people will often come up and talk to her about her dog, which otherwise they wouldn't. And there are dogs, so our dog has a, a vest that says, ask to pet me, I'm friendly, because we like that social piece. But there's a lot of dogs that are working, they're helping with mobility, they're helping with um, you know, the people who are blind or have other issues and, and really do need to focus on their job. And so you really just look at the vest to see and, and ask. Um, but they're their best friend and they're helping with their medical needs and it truly is a, an amazing thing. Jessica, can you tell me what was the most uh, uh, comforting thing you found about the survey that you guys conducted? Well, our largest finding was that family members experienced less worry about their loved one living with a chronic condition um, and that um, lessened worry may also have an impact on overall emotional functioning. I want my audience to know that Jessica Bilbo is a PhD research scientist, and this is her field of specialty and study in Tracy Salazar. She's the mother of a service dog recipient, and she is the caretaker, obviously, of a service dog. Ladies, this is a real important subject. Jessica, why did you guys decide to share the survey findings? Well, um, that was also why we did this study is because we wanted to, there's, there's long been a lot of anecdotal evidence and smaller studies looking at the impact of service dogs, but this was really the first to have a very um, large and diverse sample. So it allows us to have really stronger empirical evidence for the benefits of service dogs. And this study is also um, exciting because it looks at the benefit beyond the service dog recipient themselves and to family members such as Tracy. Ladies, thank you so very much for coming on the Valder BB show. Is there a place online where Tracy, uh, someone may need a service dog or need to know more service, about a service dog, can yeah. they go online and find some information? Yes, absolutely. You can go to canineassistance.org to learn more about service dogs, and you can also go to celebratethebond.com to learn more about the study that they did showing how effective they are. 
Ladies, thank you so very much, and thank you for bringing your friend Esther. We <laughs> really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.